why did they choose ankle deep water for this scene? Whatever gravitas this scene might have had, and that is a sh- I already I doubt it just as the words come out of my mouth, is definitely destroyed as we watch Lubot Diamond Phillips slosh over to the body of his <laughs> Oh, my socks are going to be cold. I hate this. Oh, my duster is way too long for me. It's dipping in. This is ungainly. Just next to Sylvia Plath. Too shallow? Yeah. Too shallow. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or the patrons would notice. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who's a Rhodes Scholar? (laughs) (laughs) Better than Kaylee McEnany. That would be everyone with an address. (laughs) Everyone who has an address is a Rhodes Scholar. There you go. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am fantastic, Noah. I got to watch a demon beat up Lou Diamond Phillips. It's a good day. <laughs> over and over no. and so over. Many times. <laughs> he loses. So, it's so, he never wins. <laughs> ever. It's like his life, I know. So <laughs> tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The First Power. It's the story of a detective played by Lou Diamond Phillips trying to catch a serial killer possessed by a demon with the help of the worst psychic ever. (laughs) And I know what you're thinking. You know, they're all tied for worst and best psychic ever. (laughs) But this one actually made it like actively worse by (laughs) trying to be a psychic. At one point, the cop played by Lou Diamond Phillips and the psychic are going to go find the bad guy. And the psychic starts really slowly explaining this super vague premonition. And Lou Diamond Phillips is like, okay, just shut up. They're telling me where to go on the radio. God damn it. You're the worst. (laughs) Just go. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're enjoying God awful movies, just kidding. It was all a dream. (laughs) (laughs) Or was it? Yes. Or is it? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, that's this entire fucking movie. Yep. It's false starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And we should point out here. Or was there? Don't. Yep, yep. So, okay. So we should point out. Just that, kidding. Just, this was a psychic prediction. Yep. <laughs> are, are, are you done now? Yes. Okay. So we should point out that we or found this he? for free <laughs> on YouTube, but with Greek subtitles, which was weird because... All the names were still in a Latin alphabet. I like right, like like if I watch a Chinese movie with English subtitles, the proper nouns aren't written in logograms, right? <laughs> it's very strange. Anyway, I've, I got a few subtitle notes. I thought I, I should mention that up front, or it was going to be really weird that why I was talking about Greek. Okay, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst Donald Trump has COVID. <laughs> oh. Hey, we're recording in advance, dude. By the time people listen to this, he could be dead from COVID. Right? Maybe. Oh. Listener, listener, I know you're probably listening to this episode back in the archives, but if you don't remember what it was like to be alive and free on October 2nd of 2020, <laughs> oh, just breathe in this moment with us. Breathe oh. in this moment the way Donald Trump can't. He's having so listen to him. You hear him wheezing? You hear that? It's, it's, it's better because Donald Trump has it and Joe Biden does it. Right? That's the best. He was oh. like, Haha, big stupid mask. <laughs> Woke up hey, this that, morning. The cough sounded a little dry, man. You all right? <laughs> birds all around me. It was lovely. Okay. So back to the format. I'm going to go with best worst silver bullet. So uh, this is a horror movie. So it, it, like as in every horror movie, there's only the one thing that can kill the bad guy. And it is like when they finally get around to revealing what it's going to be <laughs> in this film. It is aud- it is the most glorious, wonderful thing that I own. I will own this motherfucker. By the time they hear this episode, I will definitely own one of these in all the world. I can't wait to talk about this. We can't talk about it now. I we can't fucking wait 
It's so good that I blacked out. We all work off the same notes document and I go through it first. I blacked out my notes about this object <laughs> so yes. that he and Noah <laughs> could be surprised <laughs> and not accidentally see it in my notes. I had a genuine 10 minute pause timeout after this thing gets revealed. <laughs> Were you also on Amazon? Because I was on Amazon <laughs> after mine. Ooh, it's, it's Prime Day. Maybe they'll have this object oh, on Prime Day. I, I hear it's on Coming sale. Coming up in the middle of the month. Oh, mm, shit. See, I was going to go with best worst power ordering. All right. <laughs> this movie is called The First Power. Mm -hmm. yeah. And about 14 seconds before the end of the movie, we will learn that. And just just to clue you in so you know what the fuck's going on. You don't have to take this journey with us. That Satan and God both have three powers. The first of which is resurrection. So this movie will be about a, a demon that has absolutely everything except that power until the last 14 seconds of the movie. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Lou Diamond Phillips is on the other side of the fucking break. Uh, we're going to keep it brief. Yeah, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the feigned scenes of the first power. Lou. Lou Diamond Phillips, get in here, big guy. <laughs> hey, fellas, give me one second. I just got to get my gotta get my head through the door. Your head, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, it looks like you want to pivot. I would or, say pivot. Like, come in on then... your side. Just go back no, out. No. And... Guys, guys, I got it. I got it. Trust oh. me. <laughs> okay. Yep, just, there we yeah. go. There. Well, and no, I'm okay. in. All right. So uh, what movie do you guys want me to do next, huh? All right. Well, yeah, you were great in La Bamba. And stand and deliver. So oh, wow. good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Right. So we were thinking next, you could be in a gritty supernatural horror cop flick. Mm, yeah. So my career in La Bamba and stand and deliver makes you think I should play a a cop next. Cop. Yep. yep. Sure does. Okay. I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, just one question. Can you do any fight choreography? Are you good at that? No, not not even a little. Uh, I can dance and sing. Dance and, and sing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just make your character lose all the fights. Oh, good. Yeah. Everybody but, can get beat uh, up. I'm going to lose all the fights? In yeah, the right. No, no, that's a great idea. By like a lot. You're going to lose so much by a lot. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll have done La Bamba and The Stand and, mm -hmm. and then this movie. And then what's planned for my career after that? Um... Well, uh, oh, uh, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Yeah, that tracks. Your head is so big, right? Like really big. So wide. What shape is that? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And I'm actually going to open up on a subtitle note because, okay, we're looking at the MGM logo and... I'm pretty sure that the Greek for Metro Goldwyn Meyer is Metro Goldwyn Meyer. So, <laughs> so like I just I started off wondering is like is is Jim Dimitrakis on gel Greek for roar roar? <laughs> I don't think it is. They can't teach their kids that animal noise till way later. Way later. <laughs> what does the lion say, Mom? I'm only three. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so we get the logos. And then we get our opening credits, which include Lou Diamond Phillips and nobody else. <laughs> However, we do have the first piece of brilliance of this movie, which is someone was like, OK, as the credits go on, they're going to be carving a super scary satanic pentagram into the back. But then nice. they didn't realize how long the opening yes. credits would take. <laughs> yes. It's the fucking best. So all of our notes are triangle, triangle. A uh, star. Anarchy symbol. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I was so invested in this little licorice symbol they were drawing. But yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> the guy was so sad, too. He's just like, all right, can I do the, the pentagram now? Nope. Still, uh, still all right. Credits. Okay. Four. All right. No, I got it. I got it. I'll time it out. <laughs> pentagram. Nope. Okay. Still credits. Still credits. It looked good most of the way through, right? Because pentagram. it was like kind of cool stuff all the way through, except for that all but one side with the pentagram looked fucking stupid. And we lingered <laughs> on that for so long. So yeah, the pentagram eventually shows up and then the title like slides out from behind it, but there isn't room on the goddamn screen for the title. So the pentagram has to be like, Oh, you want me to scooch? Okay, I'll I'll move <laughs> out of the way then. Just the sign uh, of fucking Satan. It's fine. No, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> you, you go ahead and upstage me, <laughs> asshole. So, 
so so then we open the movie proper we're on a we have a nun doing like apocalypse asmr right <laughs> yeah it's the most enjoyable the movie ever was to me yeah that, that was delightful and she's talking to a group of priests and being like hey have you guys heard about the book of revelation <laughs> Did you, have you heard about this? Have you seen this? And they're like, yeah, that's fucking stupid. It applies to anything if you're a crazy person. Are you a crazy person? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. We're going to put you in a cell. Well, yeah. One of the priests says like right off the bat, he's like, look, we all know the Bible. You can twist those words to mean almost anything. I'm like, wow, that's a stark admission, priest, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're right, but wow. I, I love these guys. They're in Los Angeles. They're just like... Yeah, this is fucking stupid. I don't know. We get a paycheck and we don't pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at one point the guy goes, it's the 20th century. We don't talk about Satan. And I just wrote in my notes, see, this is why you can't be a Supreme Court justice, sister. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> and she's talking about the satanic panic. This movie was made in 89, released in 90. So we're like yeah. in that. Right. And she's explaining how like, no, the satanic panic, it's it's real. Like the world is becoming satanic. We need to panic. And they're like, oh my God, you're ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. So they advise her not to worry her pretty little head. Then we get a goddamn ad. We're four minutes into the movie. I'm like, what is this, a fucking podcast? But there's an ad in it. <laughs> okay. For me, and I don't know if this is true of you guys, this was the only ad I got in the entire Yeah, oh, me YouTube too. Video. Yep, yep, same here. That's oh. how far they thought most audiences were going to make it <laughs> into the Lou Diamond Phillips vehicle, the first power. You could buy you could buy that ad up front for 100 bucks, and anything after that, three cents. Well, yeah, though, that's the thing is that that literally means that the Epic Times is like, look, man, I'm not paying 1.4 cents for that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, so now we meet uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. He's hard at work at home cracking the case by staring at maps and whatnot, right? <laughs> it's so good. He's clearly trying to, like, make a bunch of dots on his map that represent things that have happened in his detective work and turn it into a pentagram. <laughs> but we see him being like, all right, it's like... It's like it's almost a pentagram. It's not a perfect pentagram, but this is a stupid conspiracy. And he, like, crumbles <laughs> his map and throws it out. Yeah, so yeah, he gets all frustrated and and then sexy lips calls him on the phone, right? So we're not going to meet this character yet. We're just going to meet her lips and she's calling him on the phone to give him some some clues about where the serial killer he's tracking is going to strike next. Yeah, she tells him where the killer is, but he's not allowed to kill him and he can't ask for the death penalty. Yeah, okay, so this movie comes back to that over and over again as though the arresting officer gets to decide whether they put him in the death penalty <laughs> bin or not, yeah. right? No, Lou Diamond Phillips has dibs. He has dibs, all right. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. But she's basically, she's trying to give him clues to like help with his stupid map. And I love the idea of a serial killer being frustrated by this really slow cop and being like, come on, having a call back and be like, wow, okay, it's so clearly a pentagram. You just put one more dot on the fucking top, of idiot, and then just draw that line. You got it now? Wow. Also, if this guy is killing in the shape of a pentagram, I really want to see how that worked out for most of the killings. <laughs> Lou, 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 walking alone at night. Lou, well, Lou, hello Lou. there. Oh, you scared me. You should be scared. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh uh, shit. Sorry. Do you mind uh, stepping over this way a bit? So, over sorry, here? what? Well, it's just I'm going for a like a pentagram on the map thing. And I just realized we're on the corner of Charles and first. I need to be on the corner of Charles and second. So if it's just like a... Sorry, you... Well, it's, it's on the you, corner of Charles and second. is. This isn't hard. I'm not the fucking tetrahedron killer. I'm the pentagram killer. We're making a line. Now, if you don't mind, I got to kill somebody in the middle of a lake next week. I don't have... Uh, te tetrahedral. I, I'm sorry, what? You'd be the tetrahedral killer, not the tetrahedron killer. You're not You're not killing tetrahedrons. You're killing... You know what? Here's going to be just fine, actually. All right, so now we're on stakeout. We're, we're looking at the place where the sexy lips that called Lou Diamond Phillips on the phone said that the next 
murder was going to take place, right? So we have to check in with all of our undercover stakeout cops. And by check in, I mean sexually harass the female ones. It's okay. It's the 80s. She's into it. Oh. Also, rough. they made some very strange choices at this stakeout. They had a um, <laughs> homeless guy. Okay. Lady walking by herself. All, all right. Man making out with a blow up doll in his car. <laughs> yep. They couldn't get a second female cop in 1990 <laughs> to be in that car. Yeah. Not with him anyway. I wanted the serial killer to walk up and point out the obvious blow up doll and just be like, wow, you guys are ridiculous. I'm, I'm <laughs> so, all right. So and then we also see um, we see Lou in his car and we meet his partner, Ollie. And he so Ollie is a black guy. And I mentioned that because the opening line here where Lou is talking to me, he's like, hey, man, don't be scared just because this is satanic. Are you afraid of some kind of hocus pocus shit like a the boogeyman or the KKK? That's literally the yeah. line. Um, the second thing, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're afraid of Baba Yaga, Santa Claus, and white supremacists. Yeah, huh? right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Dude, relax. They're supposed to stand by. It's fine. They're going to be standing by. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, but they're all talking about, you know, whether he's going to show up or not. And just then, Lady Cop hears a creepy noise from the alleyway. So she goes to check it out. And gets captured by the killer who chloroforms her. <laughs> Classic cat bait chloroform. Yeah, trick. We're right. Yes. And it's not a great stakeout if one of your officers can just get grabbed, right? That's the whole, that's not, that's an well, offering. Like, that's a yeah. sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> She's just wriggling around on a hook in the middle of this park. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Right, but so it's just as she's getting nabbed, two guys I have down as doubting cop one and doubting cop two show up to doubt <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips' theory. All they do is roast him for being stupid. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That is their job. <laughs> but they're telling him they're about to pull the plug on his stakeout, and that's when we get the news that Lady Cop has been abducted. Oh. Uh, yeah. And by the way, we get to see Lou Diamond Phillips get out of his car here, and we get to see his giant black duster jacket <laughs> oh, that he so will good. never take off in the shower during <laughs> sex. It does not matter. In real life, Lou Diamond Phillips is wearing that right now. He's like 58 <laughs> years old. Yeah. So, all right. So we, we meet our killer, right? He's got the lady cop tied down in some Satan ritual, and the other cops are looking for her. <sighs> I didn't catch exactly how they figured this out. Like one cop says the word park and Lou Diamond Phillips is like, park, that's a noun. Let's go. And they all run to the park. <laughs> the first of many times this movie will be like, oh, he's probably at the place, huh? The place with the things? That's where the rest of the movie is. We should go. <laughs> so. You know what we don't need is a psychic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Actually. All right. So we cut back to our killer. He's like being evil and Satan-y and shit. So he has to say the Lord's Prayer backwards, but lazily, right? Like heaven in art who father are rather than the neva ni tra al retaf ruo kind of a way. Yeah, you should have to say the words backwards yeah. letter-wise too. Yeah, Fuck right. off, lazy. Bullshit. He also stops and explains it, which kind of kills the moment. He's like, don't know if you noticed, I was just saying the Lord's Prayer backwards. That was actually backwards. <laughs> huh? Was it? <laughs> Off kind the of top a of my head, thing. so yeah, you get do it. it again. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but just then, Lou makes it to the main serial killer area of the park. <laughs> right? See, I said I wrote in my notes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there the old quarry inside this park? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a catacomb. I, as he starts wandering, wandering through all these like expansive indoor underground facilities in the park, I'm like, good thing no homeless people ever noticed this shit, huh? <laughs> but yeah, so right before the bad guy can stab Lady Cop, Lou shows up and tackles him, right? Well, actually, he doesn't. <laughs> the, the, the bad guy is just about to stab her, and he's like, Wait a minute, is that the main character creeping around? Hold on, I'll be back. I'll stab you in a second. <laughs> yeah, I thought to myself, I guess he got surprised by the movie sound effects. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's unclear. <laughs> also, it's just a little thing, but it will get funnier throughout the movie. 
he unsheaths his serial killing oh God, knife, yes. which, uh-huh. by the way, he will always have, and it goes, shing! And it will be a louder and longer shing each day. It's, by the end of the movie, it's like, it does all of Blue Man as it's on its way out of the sheath. Last time he takes that ring knife. Uh, really? I should have gotten one with a starter. It's on me. All right, so yeah, so the, the serial killer literally brings a knife to a gunfight, but he's fine. He he wins, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's wandering off, but Lou Diamond Phillips finds a trail of blood that he can follow. This is him prancing through the warehouse, yes? Yes, right, yeah. He, he's- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a scary warehouse inside this public park in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, it's on the other side of the catacombs. The park's catacombs <laughs> lead you to the warehouse. And Got it. Just to be clear, I know I mentioned it very briefly, Lou Diamond Phillips will step ball change after the serial killer. <laughs> there is no other way to describe his motion than, uh, than prancing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's going through this creepy warehouse. He's just shooting at random noises. I'm like, wow, they did realistic cop work, at least. That is how that works. I thought to myself, Lou Diamond Phillips is terrible at using his gun that has infinite bullets. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. 90s cop guns are rigged like a fucking carnival game. There's like curly cues in them. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So the bad guy starts taunting him, right? Like he's like wandering through the dark warehouse of the bad guy's like over here. Oh, getting it's colder. Getting warmer. Whisper taunt. Whisper taunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Did you just say whisper taunt? <laughs> <laughs> so, but they start getting into a fight. He runs out of bullets. His infinite bullets do run out here. Yep. So he tackles the bad guy out the window. First he first he throws the empty gun at him, which was one of my favorite parts of the movie. That guy's like, ow, that's, ow. that's a bruise now. That's a bruise. I'm going to stab you. He does that I'm going to catch it thing where he just slaps it down to the ground like, ah, ah, ah. ah. Still doing that, huh? But yeah, so they, they go out the window together. They wrestle a little bit. Lou gets stabbed a couple of times, but he gets the better of the serial killer dude and starts slamming his head against the ground repeatedly. (laughs) Okay, but here's the thing. It's supposed to be this badass moment, but the acting choice Lou Diamond Phillips has made is teenage girl has just won some sort of Jonas Brothers related prize. (laughs) So he's like, (laughs) (laughs) kind of kind of kills the moment. Yeah. So so all the other cops show up, you know, they get the bad guy, they save him because he's been stabbed pretty stabbily. And then a, a newscaster cuts in to catch us up. She's like, Lou Diamond Phillips just got out of intensive care and he caught the notorious pentagram killer. They also point out that Lou just takes out serial killers left and right. He's that cop. Yeah. They say he has caught or killed three serial killers in the last five years. I mean... Okay, well, I guess this cop is also a serial killer. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> Clearly. He, he gets mostly bad guys, we think. That never comes back or matters. Nope. There's never mm-hmm. any reason for that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So they're checking out the water treatment center that the killer used to work at. For the first time in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get plenty more of that. So then we cut to the courthouse where... Lou and the killer are both arriving at the same time and they have that awkward (laughs) couples meeting at the grocery store moment. (laughs) How does this work? The serial killer who is in cuffs being walked by cops is like, excuse me, I'd like to walk past the cop I stabbed, please. (laughs) He's right there. Walk me past it. I would would like a private moment with the cop I stabbed, please. I want to talk to him. And they're like, okay. I have a question because we see him getting out of the car and like there's a crowd of people booing him. Are you allowed to show up to court and just boo people? Because oh, I want to do yeah. that. I want I'm super sure duper allowed to do that. They That's cannot my new stop thing, you from doing that. <laughs> what I love is all of the reporters before they have their little private moment run up and they're like, Detective Logan, Detective Logan, do you think you'll get the death penalty on this one? I'm like, why would they ask the arresting officer that? <laughs> what the fuck would he have to do with it? <laughs> Anyway, okay, so the pentagram killer gets the death penalty, which means party time at the precinct, right? So all the cops start 
openly consuming alcohol on the job. No worries. That's fine. Literally popping champagne Champagne. in the middle of the office. So fucking stupid. (laughs) Yeah, but while they're drinking their champagne, Lou Diamond Phillips gets a call from Sexy Lips. She's very upset about all this death penalty shit, right? Yeah. She's like, I told you no death penalty. We had a deal. You're a cop. You're allowed to make that deal. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm allowed to lie. I just, you, yeah, I just, I just lied to you. <laughs> we do that, that shit works. all the time. <laughs> all right. So now we cut to the gas chamber and everybody's pretty fired up about the big execution. Right. Okay. So the his partner, right? The guy who he was making the KKK jokes to earlier, the door closes and he goes, adios, creep. And then you can see the actor be like, ah, I should have said it when the door was open. No, he, oh, he, can't. he can't hear me. In guys, there. guys, time out. Time out. I'm, I'm going to write a sign on paper. For my time. <laughs> Give me a second. Well, I, think I have to turn it. I don't have to write it backwards. What am I talking about? I'm just going to hold it up to him. It's not that. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, but yeah. So so they, they we watch him get executed in the gas chamber for quite a while. Don't worry. It's 1989. This was still humane back then. Jesus yeah, Christ. what God. what a bizarre choice. I, I I mean, I knew the gas chamber was a thing. I just want to know what the thinking was behind that choice societally. All right, gentlemen, it's time to work out how the great United States will execute its worst criminals. Mm-hmm. Here, here. Uh, just one thing. I don't see why we can't stick with the firing squad. I know, we already have a I know. Thing that. It's great and it works, but we need new ideas. Um, okay. Uh, do you guys promise you won't be mad? What? What's promise to happen? Promise you won't be mad. Uh, um, I'm you like, okay. you know, y- you know what? Yes, Dave, uh, we won't be mad. Okay. 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 You guys remember the Nazis? Very well, much. Yes, yep. we remember the Nazis. I remember that. Yes. Okay. So technically... Did you guys know that the gas chamber was actually invented before they used it to? Yes. Yeah. All right. So why don't we, why don't we do that? The gas chamber? Yes. Yeah. Really? It's just, you know, you know I feel like the Nazis it kind of ruined that. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the toothbrush mustache of execution methods. Yes. I, excellent, I, excellent. Okay. Analogy. I hear that, but come on, we can't not do something just because the Nazis did it. That can't be really think we can do that. That's Look, a I, good policy. Nazis had tanks. You want to get rid of all the tanks? Huh? Well, well no, guess not. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we, we used the thing the Nazis did. Yeah. But, but if anyone asks, it was invented, invented before, before them. them. Exactly. Technically, Technically, I guess. Yeah. Okay. All right. Historically, is this is this going to look okay? Uh, I'm sure it's going to be fine. It's going to look fine. I think we're overthinking it. All right. Here's the fucked up thing, man. Six states still use the gas chamber. Still, yeah. Seriously? Well, they, they like if if you committed your crime before a certain year, or if they can't do the lethal injection, yeah, they, they have. Or you're allowed to pick it. You you can choose it if that's the way you want to go. Yeah. yeah it's what? like that friend who's got a bar in his basement, and he just keeps trying to get you to come downstairs so he can show you the bar in his basement. Six states are like that with the gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Also. A whole bunch more states are somehow killing people still. Yeah. <laughs> With, without that, I don't really care if it's a little bit better. I do a little bit, but that's ridiculous. Whatever. Yeah. Well, actually, it's yeah. Well, that, that could be a real long conversation there. But anyway, it doesn't <laughs> matter for this guy, though, because the gas chamber wasn't enough for him. They clear out all the gas in the gas chamber, and then he starts fidgeting back to life and has super strength and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a giant knife. In the gas chamber. Yeah. So, like, for my last meal, I'd like a giant knife, please. <laughs> All right, but you better like, eat yeah, it. Yeah, this will be fine. We have to give are it you, to you. Are you going to eat it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we gave that one guy blueberries, so, yeah, we have to give him a knife. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, he breaks out of the gas chamber, 
or <laughs> someone well, breaks out of the cast. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> this actor could not break the sugar glass without a stunt double yes. and the worst edit I've ever seen. It was so bad. <laughs> the stunt guy's like four times his height and like a different <laughs> race. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I know we talk about it a lot here on God Awful Movies, but somewhere there's real moldering away in a garbage dump of just this actor going, <laughs> against the sugar glass wall. And the world deserves it. Yeah, it was really clear that they weren't expecting to have to use a stunt double that day. <laughs> they didn't have one the right size on hand. So he breaks out. He starts to go right after Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou shoots him because you're allowed to bring a, a gun into those kind of things. But it doesn't do any good, and don't worry, it was all a sit straight up afterwards stream. <laughs> and we should point out, this is the first of truly a dozen times the movie will do this. Yeah, yeah. There are so many fucking, oh, it was all a dream moments in this goddamn film. It's like Inception. <laughs> One would rightly believe this movie is narrated by a bored toddler. That's how often things are. <laughs> no, he doesn't jump out. He actually, um, what happened then? He has a kitty and a gun. Yes. <laughs> Speaking Great. of which, yeah. So he wakes That's up. All in the script. <laughs> his cat is pissed. So he grabs his gun, right? Because the cat is telling him that Timmy is stuck in a well, apparently. We don't speak cat, <laughs> so we don't know. It's in the Greek subtitles, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, but he but he walks around the room gunly, right? Because the cat's freaked out about something. Now, I have cats, right? So I know he's walking around with his gun because there's a squirrel right by the fucking <laughs> screen door, right? Right. <laughs> but, yeah, but at any rate, it's a horror movie, so he gets the gun. So he kicks in this one door and there's of you know, his own house and there's like blood all over the walls and shit, right? Yeah. And crazy like kids screaming noises yep. out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So he walks into this room and he's just like, huh, did I leave all this blood and kids screaming in my office? Last night? <laughs> Was that me? It could have been me. I do that sometimes. I don't remember. You know, you get tired and you're like, I should clean this up, but I, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. But you know it's going to dry like yep. bad dishes and you still yeah. leave it. Ugh. This is the worst. Sink full of dishes, walls full of blood. Yep. <laughs> the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> Bathroom walls full of blood. All right. So, yeah. So there's a knock at the door. Some beat cops are there. To bring him to the station right away. Yeah. And he's like, uh, uh, you guys are going to want to see this. My walls are covered in blood. But when he checks, <gasps> it was all a dream. <laughs> dream thing. <laughs> just, uh, just kidding, guys. I was, uh, I was just hallucinating a room of blood and child screams. Okay, time to be a cop. <laughs> Let's uh, go have me be a cop. <laughs> It'll be just fine. I am in a great mental place to be a police officer. <laughs> all right. So. But the cops take him to the scene of a crime. It turns out that Carmen, the sexy detective that they were sexually harassing at the beginning that was caught by the pentagram killer that Lou Diamond Phillips saved, actually did get murdered by the pentagram killer, even though the pentagram killer is already dead. And let me spare our audience a tremendous amount of confusion. The murdery guy will spend the rest of the movie killing people close to the protagonist. But since... The movie forgot to establish who the protagonist knows or cares about. The people will get ever more random until the movie's <laughs> like, no, remember he bumped into that extra in minute <laughs> right, five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys are jerks. <laughs> I had no idea who so many of these people were. <laughs> well, because they, they always go, it's Carmen, and then spend four minutes of screen time before they show us the person and we go, oh, oh okay, I know Carmen. that guy. Okay, yeah. Right, okay. And now it's time to meet our love interest, though. We, we, we have to finally meet Sexy Lips. She, she is a psychic named Tess Seaton. That's such a weird name. I started looking for anagrams in it. I, me too. I couldn't find anything good. I, I, I had toast sense and snot teases, but that's... Ooh, <laughs> toast sense. Oh, you know what? Snot teases makes a lot of sense. <laughs> But yeah, but but she is a psychic that's been having visions of this killer and she comes into the police department to tell Lou Diamond Phillips, no, 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 this is still the same killer spiritually, apparently. Yeah, 
she tells him, and this is very important, he's not a man now. He's a force. Yeah. <laughs> right. She says, you forgot to execute the soul. You only killed the guy. And he's like, okay, you're, you're ridiculous. You're going to need to leave. And she's like, I'm not crazy. You don't patronize me. I'm a professional psychic. Yes. Yes. And he's like, wow, that didn't help. That last <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's you're so much worse. You're right. You're not even worth patronizing. Okay. Just get the fuck out of here. Then. <laughs> so but she actually makes it work. She goes, look, I'm a psychic. But usually I just sort of let murderers get away with it. But just this once, I thought to myself, you know <laughs> what? Normally I'm I use find my lost powers. dogs and see if <laughs> shows are going to get canceled. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, okay, I still don't believe you. And she goes, here's my number. Call me when you realize the guy you killed is a force now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's even worse. He asks for a number, right? He's like, look, I don't believe all this psychic shit, but if I want to fuck you later, where would I? Um... <laughs> no. And this is when he realizes she's the one who is calling him, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. Uh huh. Because she's like, I can't believe you lied and did the death penalty. And he's like, oh, okay. So that, that was you. Also, didn't you just say you're, you're a psychic? You didn't see that coming? Yeah, you didn't right. realize I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a cop. See, I can say whatever I want. Pretty, You're pretty dumb. Terrible at this being a psychic thing. Okay, so but it turns out so she leaves, and we find out that the cops have already caught the person who killed Carmen. It's this crazy heroin junkie guy who seems like he was almost possessed by some executed demon soul when he did it. Okay. This scene is so confusing. Right? Okay. Yeah. For so many reasons. Firstly, Lou Diamond Phillips goes in and the guy's like catatonic. He's just mm -hmm. staring at the floor. And Lou Diamond Phillips seems to make the case to his fellow officer. Please correct me if I'm wrong. He seems to make the case to his fellow officer. He couldn't kill anyone. Look how still he is sitting right now. In this <laughs> yep. And they're like, yeah, that is, he's pretty still. Yep. He's pretty still. <laughs> yeah, you have to move to kill people, guys. <laughs> Maybe you should go in there and try some fire magic on it. <laughs> what the fuck was that? He's like, and he opens his like, oh, zippo. Okay, cool. He's yeah, like, I got a zippo. Look into my lighter. You are getting very <laughs> sleepy. What What are you trying to do there now? <laughs> but but nothing happens. No, and nothing. I was like, sure, something was going to happen here. And the guy just stares at him. And Ludwig Phillips is like, okay, well, fire magic didn't work, so <laughs> I'm standing. <laughs> <stunned. laughs> No. <laughs> the only explanation I have is I was once a 13 year old boy or Lou Diamond Phillips is Lou Diamond Phillips got his first Zippo and just kept whipping it out and being like, click, click. <laughs> you can do the little snappy trick. I, mean, I did that. Click. Yeah. You click, see, click. You guys yeah. see that? I, I, I uh, the, you dropped it. Oh, you keep yeah. dropping I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna, uh, I have to refill it. Refill it now. But I could balance this on the back of my head. No, no it's a There's no idea. way you're going to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a company based on that. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Now that the plot has assured us that the remaining hour or so of the runtime isn't going to be all credits, I suppose we can afford to take a quick break, but we'll be back soon with even more of The First Power. And at the time, historians didn't know how to describe this thing, right? Quote, I would never think that Heath, a man... Heath, Eli, what, what are you guys doing? ...alone by the what? birds of I, the park... I said, what are you doing? ...would ever think to do the pause, things... That pause, pause. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that, Noah. I lost my headphones, so Eli is my headphones now. Yeah, he pays me in mango now. I said pause. Heath, why don't you just get a pair of wireless earbuds from Raycon? They sent us a pair to try out, and it sounds awesome, and they feel great. It's true. They do. <laughs> Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are the best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a more compact design, and a noise-isolating fit. Plus, Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet. No dangling wires or stems. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, and for a limited time, you can get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash gam. That's fantastic, Noah. I'm in. You, you mind if I listen with you? Not at all. No. Um, play. Play now. Blah, blah, blah. History, blah, blah. Ooh, I, blah, blah, I blah, love blah. this one. Yeah, me too. So good. Detective Logan, you see, I was the one telling you about the pentagram killer. Oh, yeah? And how'd you do that? 
I'm a psychic, you see. I don't like to get involved in these things, but after I saw what he did in the paper, I just couldn't stop myself. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, you, I'm, did you just say you don't like to get involved in these things? Uh, y yes, it, it's really quite painful. Well, oh, so, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have magic powers. Uh, psychic powers. Hey, whatever. So psychic powers that could help you stop all the murders, but you chose just to help the police with, like, the last three? Uh, yes. Wow. Oh. You kind of suck, don't you? Well, I mean, when you put it that way, yeah, I I guess I suck. Like a ton. A ton. A ton. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit we're going to open up on Lou and his partner breaking into the psychic lady's house right her mansion yeah. well her, her mansion. yeah yeah she's a gazillionaire psychic <laughs> but yeah so because this is a fucking 80s cop movie the cops are just like yeah we don't need no warrant let's break on in and, and we at home watching along are like yeah fuck civil liberties <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 and then they find a computer and I just started writing in my nose, ooh, ooh, ooh a computer in an 80s movie. This will be great. Oh, yeah. it's the fucking best. <laughs> they walk in, they see her 12-foot bong on her table, which was cool, and they right? just ignore it. What the it. fuck was that? But then they're like, all right, let's check her computer. Maybe she has some uh, prophecy software. And she does. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She literally does. And uh, I got to mention... The functions on this prophecy software. Oh, please do. They show us the screen for a second. It has seven functions lettered so you can choose from, you know, menu style. Mm -hmm. See which one doesn't belong. <laughs> Play along. <laughs> okay. The seven things that prophecy software can do are A, horoscope. Okay. B, past lives. Sure. C, Wall Street. What? Okay. Useful. Okay. D, Psychic clients. That's just, you know, informational. Address book. Yeah. E, mind games. Ah, if you want to have a little fun. F, metaphysical info. Is that Ooh, just sort of a meta category of stuff? <laughs> and G, sports. Oh, well, you got to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So good. people bet on that. Yeah. Okay. Also, it seems like, you know, it would know what menu you were going to need without asking. It seems like a psychic <laughs> software could just go to it. And I, I want to point out, like, just for, for context, commercial internet wasn't the thing then, right? This wasn't her website. This was just her personal computer. It would yep, not right. dial up internet wouldn't be introduced for another three years. Yeah, this lady <laughs> never needs a word document. She just needs psychic clients, mind games, and sports. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they they start listening to her phone messages, right? And they're fantastic, right? They're they're, they're exposition the based messages. It's hello, I hear you are psychic. I want that. <laughs> I goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it actually says, "I hear you're the most accurate psychic," which. <laughs> I thought it was great because that means there's like budget psychics that only do <laughs> long shot stuff. Like, <laughs> listen, I, 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 if you got twelve dollars, uh, okay, <laughs> I can give you a tip about a roulette wheel. It's like a one in thirty eight <laughs> shot. That's, can, that's all I got for you. I can look it up on five thirty eight for you. Yeah, <laughs> but the second message is my fucking. Yes. Oh, is that the boyfriend breaking up with her for being too it psychic? Is the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, honestly, he was the most sympathetic character in the entire goddamn movie. He's amazing. Yeah. I don't know how we don't meet him more because he's his whole concept is hilarious. He's calling up here to be like, hey, it's Paul. Uh, it's fucking impossible dating a psychic. Yeah. <laughs> we need to talk. Or you know what? I guess we don't. I guess we don't. We know what's happening here. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> yeah, so and then the third message though is from the ser the dead serial killer, the one who's been executed. I know his execution turned out to be a dream sequence, but he was executed at some point. The movie never tells us that exactly. Yeah. And he's like, I'll see you later in the movie, Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the killer says, and this is important. I'll see you at this exact, you know, the corner of this street and that street. Ha ha ha. Right. 
And just then she walks in, uh, the, the psychic lady, Tess, and, and she's like, hey, um, yeah, just break into my house and go through my shit and look at the look at my Commodore. And this is 1989. Hey. Fuck you. We're putting <laughs> you in cuffs. <class. laughs> 9-11. What do we say before 9-11? 9-11. Yeah, Russia. <laughs> just Russia. Iran Contra. Yeah. Cold War. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but he drags her over there. And he's like, I want to know about this message on your answering machine. And he plays it back. And it was all a dream. It was never there at all. But he, first, he gets the wrong message when he tries to play it back. He's like, listen to this. Oh, okay, this is your boyfriend breaking up with you. Sorry, this is awkward. Thanks okay. No, next one. <laughs> next. Don't, next. I'm hitting listen next. To that Fuck. Later. The next. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but then that message from the evil demon guy is gone somehow. Yeah. And it's uh -huh. like, you're crazy. That, that machine's only had two messages for 30 years. This is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> So. I wanted him to keep going with the message machine. He accidentally does like a remix of the boyfriend. It's just like, I can't, I can't date you anymore. Date, date you anymore. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, it's Paul. Please take me back. I'm just kidding. Breaking up with you again. God. I just called Paul back by accident. We, you talk. You talk. Hello, Paul. It's the police. You're good. <laughs> It's not you. It's me. No, you know no. it's you. You know it's you. <laughs> Here, I can't. I can't. You knew I was going to say that, and you knew it was you. Keep fucking this up. You suck. All right. So yeah. And so the whole time, Ollie, the partner, is sitting there going like, uh, "Hey, man, you keep saying that there's a message from a dead guy on the machine. I don't think it's good that you say that thing out loud." And he's like, "You're right. I'm saying, and it was something different. Good call. Good call." <laughs> All right. No further questions. <laughs> So, but of course, obviously, he then goes to the exact street corner where the serial killer just told him to go, right? <laughs> yeah, which is a mariachi-themed, like, street fair? Yeah. yeah. And we get these amazing, like, spooky shots of mariachi-dressed <laughs> people. Like, they, they very clearly do an ominous pan over, like, old little Mexican ladies, and it's just like... <laughs> It's just a little Ooh, Latina, Latina, <laughs> Latina, Latina. They, they will sell you churros. churros. <laughs> so, yeah, they're trying to be scary. And one of those shots is a guy just being like screaming <laughs> about my amazing street corn. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and we should point out that um, Ollie says like she she tells Ollie that he's in danger. Her psychic powers tell her that he's in trouble. Right. So he's yeah. all freaked out. Yeah, and Lou Diamond Phillips is like, relax. You're a black buddy cop in an 80s movie. You're going to be fine. <laughs> you know what will make you feel better? Call your wife and tell her you can't wait to see her and you're so excited to meet your new baby. Huh? That'll cheer you up. Aren't you too no. old for this shit? Get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but just then, a horse is frightened and is running right at his partner. <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh my God, did the bad guy possess a horse? I still don't know if he did or not. I'm pretty sure he did. He might have Absolutely. possessed a horse or the rider or the horse and then the rider. I, it's not clear. I mean, but the horse like literally like, runs over the partner and then backs up and runs over him again a couple <laughs> of times. I feel like you have to possess the horse for that, right? Well, yeah, I, I feel like Lou Diamond Phillips made it worse here, too. <laughs> yes. I think it was mostly his fault. Because this horse attack starts happening. Horse attack. And he starts That's what we're watching. firing his gun into the air right next to where this is happening. <laughs> and he's just like, gunfire, calm down, demon horse. Yes. Calm down. Gunfire, calm down. <laughs> and people who are running everywhere, enough of this pandemonium. I'll fire a gun in the air. It's a good thing those bullets stay in the air after you fire them, too. Oh, that would be dangerous. <laughs> bullets, start looking for the bad guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know they're not going for comedy trampling here, but I only know that from context clues. This horse rearing back up to trample on the partner some more is so goddamn funny. Oh. It's like Binky attacking my feet in the morning. And and again, like they can't actually squish this actor, so we get this weird like half shot of wooden fake horse hooves like gently tapping this yes. actor on the chest and him being like, ouchie, I'm getting squished. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, so so the horse stomps 
the partner to death. We will never see him again. We'll never acknowledge that that's what happened. But yes, that's what happened. So it's time for our chase scene. Car chasing a horse. <laughs> and if you want to know how broke this fucking movie is, the guy literally pushes his fruit cart out of the way before the car gets there. <laughs> it's the best. In fairness, they spent most of their money on the 80s drum fill that starts the chase scene. Okay, yeah, that's true. That it's was a so lot good. of drum fill. <laughs> Phil Collins, chase scene. <laughs> yeah, so the chase scene doesn't last very long because it's a car chasing a horse. So eventually, uh, Lou jumps out of his car. He chases the bad guy into this creepy building and catches up with him on the roof. Yeah. yeah. Well, he jumps out of the car and then he's like, oh, wait, yeah, this psychic is with me. That was stupid. I'm going to need to lock you in this car with the seatbelt. And she's yes. like, yeah, what really? the fuck? You, th you think you're locking me in the car with a seat? That's nothing. Nope, okay, whatever. Doesn't. Yeah, no, I'm locked. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how to get out. There's a secret. <laughs> oh, psychic. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. So but he chases the bad guy, catches up with him on the roof. They have a little roof altercation, and then the bad guy just jumps off. Yep. Like five stories up. He's got uh, super jump now, which uh, I would argue that's the first power. Super jump. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. So, all right. Then he chases him, but he loses him, of course, because, you know, he, he can jump five stories. And then doubting cops show up to doubt Lou Diamond's bullshit some more. Right. He's like, are you telling me that the bad guy jumped five stories and then ran away? And he's like, yep. And he's like, that's well, like, OK, uh, let's try lie this again. to me. If that's if that really happened, then you should make up a lie <laughs> at least. Yeah. One more time. I need you to tell this story in a way that you're not fired right now. That'd be great. <laughs> Lou Diamond was like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. So uh, I. Nope, nope, that's my still, nope, same, no, same nope, story. No, that's still. what I got. Oh, and he's like, hey, what happened to my witness? And he's like, yeah, it turns out that. um." Seatbelts just open right up. You can just, you just push yep. the button and it opens. So she also, left. you know, we don't get to just take people, right? Like that's a cop. <laughs> I do not know that. <laughs> oh, and I, I love, by the way, that the two doubting cops are razzing him this whole time. His partner was stomped to death by a horse an hour and eight minutes ago. And they're like, look at this fucking idiot over here. <laughs> Never a better opportunity to roast. Yeah. And then, of course, they, they end that scene by having another uniform cop come in and say, sir, they got Maza. We have no idea who the fuck who? Maza is. Right. <laughs> right. And, and when we see him, he's 300 yards away from us in the distance, way up on top of something and shit. So for the longest time, they're like, oh, my God, Maza. And we're like, we don't know who that is. <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips doesn't know who that is. He comes into the scene and he's like, it's. Was he in the movie? Was this guy in the movie? <laughs> was he the one making out with the... I think he was the one making out with the blow-up doll, right? Is that... Is that? He... We didn't do names. Did we do names in that exposition <laughs> Are we expecting our audience to take notes? It seems like a lot to ask our audience to take notes. Yeah, but the bad guys have like hung Maza up like crucifixion style way up on some girder where how in the world would they ever have even gotten up there? We don't know. The movie never tells us. Well, they kind of do. I mean, the one cop is like, how'd they get him up there? And everybody's like, well, I don't know. Probably the reverse of the way we're getting him down right now. We're, we're, <laughs> we're using a crane. So, yeah. Yeah. So they get up. They, they get the body down with a crane. They set it over where there's a lot of water for dramatic effect. There are dry places where they could have set it. But, you know, it's more dramatic. No. Why did they choose <laughs> ankle deep water for this scene? <laughs> Whatever gravitas this scene might have had, and that is a sh I, I already, I doubt it, just as the words come out of my mouth, is definitely destroyed as we watch Lubot Diamond Phillips slosh over to the body of his... <laughs> eh, eh, my socks are going to be cold. I hate this. Oh, my duster is way too long for me. It's dipping in. Is ungainly. I'm still wearing it. Just next to Sylvia Plath. Too shallow? Yeah, too shallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent joke. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So so Lou goes to the church 
because he knew our audience would be wondering if any of this bullshit counted, right? So he goes to a Catholic church. Yeah. <laughs> he sees his crucifix teasing him by doing the pose that his, his dead cop buddy was just doing, right? Yeah. And then he goes in to confess. And this is the first time I ever realized that confessionals had little occupied signs like airplane toilets. And he, he gets in with this preacher and he's like, uh, hey, preacher, it's been a while, but... Um one of the guys I caught is a force now. Do you have any anti-force <laughs> <laughs> magic? Psychic shit. Yeah, well, so first we have to learn, of course, that he he doesn't really believe in all this religious stuff because his dad died. Now, this is an action movie, not a Christian movie. So his dad was shot instead of dying in a car accident or of cancer. But it's basically the same basic principle. Yeah, you get a half the bingo square. Half the bingo square. <laughs> there you go, yeah. And then he tries to ask, like, can people rise from the dead, right? Can like people reanimate? But it's so badly scripted that he's like, uh, Father, I need to know, do people die stupid? Stupid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that seriously your question? No, I meant then not they don't. <laughs> so- <laughs> okay. Something with a demon? Do you have a question? Yeah, demon. Is it a demon? Demon into the question? It feels yeah, like that's what demon? you're trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says to the preacher, he's like, hey, man, so is demonic possession is that? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, no, that's totally, absolutely legit. Totally real. He's like, <laughs> how do you know for sure? And he's like, because I'm the killer. And he leaves out at him to kill him. <laughs> Except it's all just a dream. It is. <laughs> and I love, by the way, how he reveals himself with the let me ask your question. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He asks the father, he's like, okay, so how do you defeat a demon? And the father's like, well, let me answer your question with a question. Um, my question is, knife throw! And <laughs> giant sling knife flies out at him. It's the best. Yeah. Oh. Right, so he leaps out of the confessional booth. He's waving his gun around, right? Yep. Because, you know, he's only had like six of these crazy visions of shit that hasn't haven't turned out to be real up to this point. You might as well start shooting at him at this point. Yep. yep. And the demon is now up on the stage dressed as the priest. And I love that he was taunting Jesus. He's like, he does. look, look, I'm Jesus. He stands like this. Stupid fucking <laughs> Jesus. Arms up, crucified. I like saviors who don't get crucified. Idiot. <laughs> Yeah, and then he just, he the bad guy goes all Rivali's gay all over him and leaps out the stained glass window with the, with the super jump. Yep. Yeah. Demon magic is mostly jumping based. Very jumping based, we will learn in this movie. So yeah. far, yeah, there's a lot of parkour moves in demonology. And then we have this chase scene for no discernible reason, right? He chases the bad guy. Like, there was no reason for the bad guy to reveal himself at this point. The bad guy is, you know, getting chased for the sake of getting chased. So he runs into this seedy motel. <laughs> There's all these homeless people sitting around and he's like looking at all of them to see which one looks most demon possessed. <laughs> this hotel is also the DMV in their lobby of their hotel. Yep. Yeah. I wrote, this is where people are when they aren't at a casino. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but he, he looks around and one of the, the homeless people kind of like points upwards to him. He's like, no, he's up there, man. The guy you're looking for. Right. So he goes upstairs and the bad guy gets the jump on him and kills him with a bat. But don't worry. That was just a psychic vision that psychic lady was having. How much of it? Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Weren't we already in a dream a second ago? It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Some of none of this happened. <laughs> but yeah, so she runs to this motel or she actually she runs to a cab and says, take me to the seediest motel you've got, I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or her premonition started with, oh, look, the the sign of the Baltimore Hotel. <laughs> now let me watch this murder in my premonition. <laughs> now let me go there in real life. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Exactly. So, yeah, so she's running that way. And then, of course, now Lou is like living out the psychic prediction. He's going into the hotel. So we get to watch that scene we just watched again. Yeah. Which is fun. But she stops. She's like, Logan, right before he's about to get killed by the killer guy. Yeah, exactly. And then so we get the, the big bat fight then. She also stops the killer guy for a second with her magical amulet trick. Yes. He's He's got the axe or the bat and he's about to swing it at Lou Diamond Phillips. And she's like, 
look at this pentagram coin that I have. This pentagram, that's an automatic timeout. You have to, <laughs> oh, you have God. to take a timeout. And he's like, I do have Fuck to take yeah, a timeout. That is an automatic timeout. Fuck All right. Me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but after five <laughs> seconds, I believe the rules say that I am allowed to use this ceiling fan chainsaw that has a jet engine inside <laughs> as my second weapon. <laughs> what All right. was this? All right. This movie just graduated, right? So, like, up until now, it was just stupid, but this made it amazing stupid. This was fan-fucking-tastic. It's blocking bullets. It's the best. Yes. Yeah, so the killer reaches up, pulls the ceiling fan out of the ceiling, and then turns it on them as though he's trying to blow them away with it. But it starts whirring like a fucking buzzsaw. They start backing away. No idea what they're back. Like, oh, they're like, oh, that's going to modulate the fuck out of our voices. I don't know <laughs> what they're going for there. But then, like, Lou Diamond Phillips is shooting at it, but it's bulletproof. And eventually it, like, <laughs> runs them out the window. <laughs> oh, I wanted to see somebody else at this hotel turn on the ceiling fan somewhere else and like click it a fourth time and be like, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do these like this? <laughs> yeah, so, but they get to, uh, or no, no, sorry, they get outside, Lou Diamond Phillips steals a car. Okay, I'm sorry. I know this doesn't matter to the plot of the movie at all, but I need to talk about the guy that they steal the car from. <laughs> He's pretty great. And the choices... So they stop and he's like, police business. And the guy goes, hey, I'm not one of those assholes who doesn't love the cops, which means that the movie basically goes, stop police business. And he's like, blue lives matter. Have my car. <laughs> yes. Yep. yep. <laughs> but yeah, so he, the bad guy jumps off the roof because remember, he has roof jumping powers. So he jumps you know, down onto the car and we get the uh, a good old fashioned 1980s guy on the hood scene. Mm. which graduates to guy on the roof of the car scene. Eventually, they knock him off, though, by driving through one of those drive through dumpsters yep. <laughs> that they have in the world. <laughs> Who fucking knows? All right. So <laughs> they stop the car, right? And they're like, uh, hey, man, sorry that we you know drove your car through a dumpster. And he's like, no, it's okay. Blue Lives Matter. I, I, I'm totally I'm <laughs> down with this. I'm, I'm still going to vote for Trump in 2016 and 2020. Okay. Okay. You're out of the <laughs> movie now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get back in the line for the drive through dumpster. That was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! <laughs> All right. So Lou and the psychic wander off for a little exposition. Hot dog guy. <laughs> This is the best character. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Look, so they're talking about all their spiritual weird shit, and the hot dog guy is standing right behind him going like, oh, fuck are you guys smoking, right? <laughs> the best. They're literally just describing exactly the crazy thing they think happened to them. Like, all right, all I know is you're being attacked by a demon spirit who is given maybe immortality by Satan or God or something, and the hot dog guy's just standing two feet away from them being like, Okay, well, that sounds fun. Do you guys want a fucking hot dog or not? Let's go. <laughs> so, and they have, hey, credit where credit's due. They have a genuinely funny comedy moment here. Like, they realize, oh, we've been talking about demons in front of the hot dog guy. And he goes, yeah, she just got out of the hospital. And hot dog guy's like, you might want to put her back in there. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed yeah. pretty hard. <laughs> you, you want a hot dog before you go back into the asylum? Great. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you guys thought he was the best character. My favorite character was the guy who walks up to him afterwards, right? Like after he delivers that fun little joke and says, can I get a hot dog plane? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Who the fuck eats a fucking meat on a bun a hot dog? What are you, for? Uh, I, mean, I would like a sausage, but I don't. I also want my chest to hurt afterwards. Do you have a? I'd like a hot dog cut up into small pieces on a plate, please. <laughs> Could you pre-chew some of it? I don't know how good. Do you sell noodles do. with a little bit of butter? No. All right, then a plain hot dog will be fine. <laughs> and a juice. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, but it, it. You know, he's like, okay, what do we do now? Like, what's the plot of this fucking movie anyway? She's like, you know what? I know a psychic that's way better than me. Maybe she can help us. And by the way, no. <laughs> nope. Like the, they go, they're going to go see Marguerite, the nun from the, the beginning of the movie. Mini boss psychic, be yeah. yeah. But like she will never have psychic powers or anything. Or be useful in any way. 
Yeah. No. Yeah. Nobody will, but <laughs> she <No>. definitely will. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. So they go to the nunnery to see her and they get to the, there, there's a lady that like, I guess the bouncer at the nunnery is like trying to turn them away. <laughs> yep. It's like, well, so, t- t- tell her it's police business. And the lady's like, yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you to fuck off. And she's like, okay, tell her it's spiritual business. She's like, oh, okay. Well, in that case. That is our market. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay. Rifra covered me on the police matter. Thing, yeah, <laughs> all right. We don't have laws here for laws, but uh, okay. <laughs> you said magic. All right. Yeah, right. Money. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, so they take him to Sister Marguerite's weird basement cell where she has like a thing that she can slide back and, and talk to him for only a second, but but only a second. I wanted her to be like, uh, I'm on the toilet. This is not the, my room is down the hall if you guys want to. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a shit. Yeah, but so instead she, she slides back her little thing and the psychic lady goes, uh, what can you tell us about the first power? And she's like, nothing. Really? Nothing at all. She's like, it's act two. No, I can't. No. I'm not gonna Yeah. Your your exposition is in another castle. <laughs> she says the church doesn't let us talk about that. We're not allowed to talk about the first yeah. power. And uh-huh. Diamond Phillips jumps in with his best line in the movie. He's like, uh yeah, okay. So not to be disrespectful, but uh fuck the church in the face. People are getting killed <laughs> and you have to yeah, tell us. Right. <laughs> yeah, see the, the more you know there, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> so but the nun is like, you know, forget the first power. And I'm like, well, I mean, up until the fan scene, that was really easy to do. But now <laughs> this one's gonna stick with me. But clearly this nun is gonna be no help at all in act two. So we'll see if we can speed things up for him by taking a break here. First though, let me give act three the hard sell. Can they track down the demonic spirit in time? What the fuck would they do with it if they found it? What were they afraid the ceiling fan was going to (laughs) do? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the underwhelming conclusion of The First Power. (laughs) They play out that scene. It's just like, Ow. Ow. Uh, you're an asshole. Stop against my arm. They reach over and just pull the little pole chain. It slows down. <laughs> oh, great. Now, now I got to pull it three more times. Was it three or four? Okay. God damn it. You can't oh, tell right God. away. No. no, if you listen for it, you can tell if you listen. You got to listen. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing the clicks. Stop screaming. Shh. Time out. Time out. You got you got a time out earlier. I call time out for my fan thing. <laughs> Pull that medallion out. Use your medallion. Here's a regular pointing star. You have time out. <laughs> Damn it. He still hasn't texted me back. Uh, hey, Noah. Oh, uh, yeah. t- two is fine. Wait, what? Uh, Heath says two o'clock is fine. Okay, but why didn't he just text me? Oh, uh, yeah. Heath realized how much he was spending on his cell phone bill. And it's just a lot cheaper to send me. So, uh, yeah, he says two is fine. Well, why doesn't he just switch over to Mint Mobile? Okay, one second. No, (sighs) Eli, don't just run off. Damn it. Ah, uh, uh, He says, uh, what's Mint Mobile? No. One second. I'll be right back. One Uh, second. This is going to take forever. Okay, sorry, sorry. He says, what's Mint Mobile? They were the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, and now Mint Mobile is introducing their unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. Wow, just 30 bucks a month? That's right. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. That sounds awesome. Wait, where can Heath sign up? Well, to get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Nice. I can't wait to tell Heat the good news. Oh, yeah. Oh, and hey, hey, when you do, will you give him this eggplant? Uh, sh- sure. Why? Oh, he'll, he'll know. <laughs> Lord Satan, I summon thee. Grant me your will. 
Who summons Satan, the morning star? I am your humble servant, Satan. Please grant me the power so that I may kill in your name. Yes, it is granted. You may die, but you will rise again. Um, Lord Satan? Hello? Uh, Lord Satan? I just, quick thing. Yes, my servant. Hi, yeah, right, um... It still hurts? Uh, what does? Dying. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, so the whole first power thing, well, where I come back to life, I still have to die, like, each yes, time before right. that. right. No. You, I'm sorry, what is the problem? Uh, well, I mean, it, like, really, really hurts when that happens. I... I don't... Uh, L like, like, the gas chamber, that happened... Uh, th then I got shot, uh, jumped off a building, um, all that stuff happened. And I can't stress this enough. It it really, really fucking hurts so okay. much. All right. It's all right. so bad. Okay. All right. Tell you what. Tell you what. Uh, how about I also grant you the third power? The power to possess Ooh. drug addicts. The, sorry. The power to possess drug addicts? Just, yep. just them? Yes. I mean, I feel like regular non-addicted people would be more, like, useful. Sure. Okay. Well, look, it's, it's, it has to be drug addicts, okay? O okay. <sighs> That's weird. Anyway, um, follow up. Just because, uh, you know, <laughs> fool me once. Um, when I'm possessing drug addicts, am I going to spend most of my time w wanting drugs really, really bad because of the body I'm in? Well... I, I mean, probably, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're a dick. And we're back for still more of this shit. And now I guess fucking Lou and Tess are partners now. So we're going to rejoin them driving around looking for clues. <laughs> this is where they stop and, and get a drink together. Go to the bar. <laughs> so fucking stupid. This scene exists only to torture Heath. Right, it's just like all the things I was furious. All the things Heath doesn't want you to do in a bar, this actress does in the pace of four seconds. So ridiculous. She points out that the scotch is quote watered down. I wrote in my notes. Bartenders love this. Always do this because they love this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did I put a lot of water in your scotch neat that you watched me pour from the bottle? God damn it! <laughs> and then she takes the bottle. Oh yeah. But like nope. With the little pour thing on it? <laughs> yeah. None of that. Nope. <laughs> Somebody just open the door with your face and you're on the sidewalk yeah. now. It's well, what I love is one, I wrote, they love that even more. Definitely do that. But like, <laughs> I love the idea that she can't take the little drink thingy pourer out. And so she's like, now we can finally have a, oh, only an ounce at a time. Shit. Okay. <laughs> I gotta shake it. I gotta shake it. Turn it this is, this way. Uh, ah. A real shot's like an ounce and a quarter to an ounce and a half. This is ridiculous. <laughs> she can't even get that much. Yeah. Also, she orders a scotch. Just like, I'll have a scotch. Just the alcohol the type, please. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. One alcohols, please. <laughs> Gross. And then they leave without paying for the drinks. I, oh, my oh God. you're right. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was rooting so hard for a bartender to run out and side tackle her as they're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so it turns out that the reason they're there isn't even a drink to begin with. It's so that she can help him work through his dead dad trauma because his dad got killed in a bar, I guess. Ugh. But yes, yeah, so, but they have a fight, right? Like he's like, oh, yeah, well, this is why your boyfriend doesn't want to date you, psychic bitch. And she's like, oh, fuck. And she wanders off and he's like, oh, well, that's not productive. We don't have enough movie for us to have a conflict. So he just chases her down. He's like, Totally sorry about that. Uh, resolved. And she's like, yeah, resolved. We don't have time for a whole big conflict. <laughs> We're not paying the bill. She stormed out. Bye. Yeah, right. Bye. Exactly. So they decide that they're going to go to the serial killer's house. Right. Who also had a mansion for some reason. Apparently. Yeah. And, and his grandma is there. She has old lady only opens the door a crack syndrome, which is so common <laughs> in cop movies. <laughs> they're like, Hello. Your son was a serial killer, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they go into the lie. They're like, oh, we're actually from the newspaper. And uh, we know he was innocent. 
If you let us in, we'll explain. Yeah, right. We are here from the newspaper times, and uh, we know how much the family members of serial killers love to talk to reporters, so we've decided to pretend to be them. Uh, we're from next door. We heard you have been asking about why people are walking across your lawn. Oh, yes, come right in. All right, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. So they start looking around at the, at her photos. There's one great line. She goes, that was my husband. He was a good man. The good all die young. And I'm like, that's a weird thing for an old lady to say. Wait, that, that is, is a weird. weird. <laughs> a Billy Joel reference? You big fan? I guess what I'm saying is I fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Can't help but notice there's three of us and something could be going on later, huh? <laughs> So, also, mm. by the way, I should point out that there is like music box music in the background of this scene because, like, that's the creepy. Entire scene. The scene to the point where I had to like take my headphones off to see if there was a goddamn ice cream truck driving <laughs> by my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the grandma takes him into Channing, the murderer's old childhood room. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and that crazy music's playing the whole time, and she's explaining how he was great. She's like, Yeah, he's. Great kid, super quiet, hated people, always had uh, music box playing in minor keys. Great kid, no, no clues <laughs> about Giant how. Giant shing knife, his anything. knife would always go shing. <laughs> <laughs> he played the knife in orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to, like, um, the psychic lady starts going all psychic, right? They're in his bedroom, his childhood bedroom, and she's like, Oh, he used to come in here at night. I'm like, it's his fucking bedroom, lady. Like, you're going to have to do better than that. <laughs> What's great is they're trying to do that. Grandpa came in and had sex with his daughter while grandma watched. And that serial killer guy is the result of that. Right. But this movie, I guess, was PG-13 or I assume it's not R. Yeah. Because right. they're definitely doing the not R rated version of psychic description of that. It's like, oh no, not in my no no bits. That would be a whoopsie of the highest order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're being coy about it. But but it's at this point, of course, that the the old lady says, Wait a minute, this isn't right. Reporters don't usually go into weird psychic monologues in the middle of their reporting. And that's when she recognizes Blue Diamond Phillips. She's like, hey, wait a minute. You're no fucking reporter. You're that guy from La Bamba. Get out of here. <laughs> kicks them all out. And can I just say, hard to reclaim the moral high ground when you let your husband bone your daughter, lady. Like, eh, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe you take a back seat yes. in this particular argument. <laughs> so, all right. So then they, they leave that house. Tester's running off to the hills for reasons unknown to us, the viewer, and Lou Diamond Phillips, the character. Oh, right. No idea <laughs> and why. Lou Diamond Phillips has to run up a hill for the second time in the movie. <laughs> and he is not happy about this. He does not do well at all. Yeah, but he gets to play with his Zippo more, right? Like she runs into this dark tunnel, water treatment center area, whatever. And he has to light his way with his Zippo. That Zippo comes in awfully handy in this film. <laughs> yeah, he's just running behind her being like, stop running into weird places without explaining. What are you doing? I don't understand. <laughs> the progression of this film makes no sense. There's no urgency for you not to explain. God damn it. Okay, I can't see now. Are you are you taking us to the end of the movie? You're taking us to the end of the movie. <laughs> okay, all right, good, good, yeah. <laughs> but eventually they wind up in this unsafe tunnel filled with poison water or something. A guy comes in and tells him like, oh, this area is all poisonous because of the earthquake. Or There's never a reason why any of that. And none of it will ever. I mean, it pays off in that it is about to be used in 10 minutes when the movie ends, but like not in a way that matters or makes any sense. He just pops in and he's like, right, so this big wheel here lets a bunch of water into the room. Oh, what if I turn the big wheel? No, don't do that. I'm turning it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, psychic. Psychic is turning this big wheel for a second like she's playing with it. And he's like, don't play with anything. Please don't play with anything. What did I just say? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot what scene we were shooting. Yes. Right. But he he had just explained that an earthquake happened and this is the old water system that they don't use anymore. But rather than like shut it off, they kept water flowing to it. And the city pays this guy to just 
kick people out of that <laughs> right, area yeah, so exactly. they don't turn the big wheel on and fuck everything up. I I'm, I'm cheaper than a padlock. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, but then she realizes that the serial killer's spirit is mad at them. He's hanging out in this happy place and they're fucking it up. He can't go while they watch, right? Yeah. Or something along those lines. She gets devil stigmata on her hands right in this moment. But what's amazing is the two characters look at each other like, this is probably just a, a vision, right? Or a dream or something. And he's like, yeah, pretty much everything that's happened in the movie is a vision. And and sure enough, it is a vision. So they're like, see, told you. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't even do the doodly do. It's fine. We're, it's, it's, <laughs> not even, we're, it's nothing. So, okay. So then we have to cut over to the church for a second. And, and we see like Sister Marguerite is going after like the... The fucking holy hand grenade of Antioch. Right. So, so we know that she's getting a religious relic, but we're not told what it is just yet. Yeah. Please be crucifix nunchucks. Please be crucifix nunchucks. <laughs> you were so Spoiler, close, to right. close to right. Yeah, that was so much closer to right than it had any need to be. <laughs> but the the father walks in while she's doing this and she's like, I wasn't opening the magic box of evil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I clearly was. I was I totally was, opening man. the we have a magic box, box of evil. I feel like I should use it. <laughs> and at the end of the scene, like she convinces him that she needs to use the weapon of Jesus or whatever. And he's like, I'll pray for you. And the scene ends. And I just thought to myself, okay, he says that, but like, that's kind of like me ending a conversation with I'll podcast for you. Right. I mean, you're that's a your priest. Thing. That's yeah. your whole, <laughs> we're going to do that anyway. Oh, there's also this great moment here too, where she says, you know, she's like, I need this father. I believe Satan has granted one of his disciples, the first power. And the priest is like resurrection. And she's like, I'm trying to, man, you fucked up all of the goddamn suspense I had built, but yes, resurrection. Why would yeah. I even Never mind. <laughs> also the you're second power is super better. jump. And the third power is, Knife. Knife. <laughs> Always knife. Knife shing. Permanent knife <laughs> shing. So. All right. So meanwhile, Lou and Tess are leaving the poison sewage tunnel in a hurry. She's had another psychic vision, and she realized that somebody close to him is in danger. He's like, where is it? He's, she's like, it's in the next scene. Come on. Okay. Uh, you're, you're being really vague. With You want to tighten up the fucking premonitions a little bit? <laughs> well, and at this point, I started thinking to myself, like, if it's not Tess, then who the fuck else could it be? The only other character that we introduced that he's close to is his cat. <laughs> oh, that would have been at the end. The cat's just lying there, strapped down into the Satan circle. No. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm getting the premonition again. It's hot dog guy. So uh, we don't care, right? He was a dick. We don't care. It's actually the guy who ordered from hot dog guy because he was physically closer to us. <laughs> All right, so and then the so the police radio cuts in as they're going to wherever she, it is that she's psychic about to tell Logan that he has to go exactly where the demonic spirit killer tells him to, right? Yep. So they do that again. <laughs> See, uh, us cops, we're going like if anything faster than you without psychic magic. You really don't need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. Stop. <laughs> All right, so he goes into this, I guess, this mill of some... It's a place with a lot of fucking catwalks. And basically, the main bad guy is just telling him, okay, now make a left. And he's like, oh, make a left, Tom. <laughs> right? <laughs> Eventually, he ends up falling through the floor where Wiley Satanic painted the big X. Yes! <laughs> he fell into some quick wood. And now he <laughs> just sank right through it. And this is where Tess reappears again, and she's got her amulet, but it... It doesn't work this time. Yeah, he's like, we reason? can't, you can't do that twice in the same movie. Come on. It's well, like, yeah, she tries to do amulet timeout, and he's like, Haha, idiot, you're holding it upside down. Doesn't count. That's just a star. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow. Okay, if you're gonna carry that around, like maybe put this side up on it to remind yourself, yeah, or right? like, yeah, some extra metal to like yeah, guide handle. your hand to hold it right. <laughs> and they also have a great moment. Her and the killer in this. She goes, you can't kill people forever, and he's like. I can though, because I, I reanimate. That's my whole plan. And she was like, the whole thing. Oh, dip. Right. Yeah, I guess yeah. you do. I fuck. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> okay. But what if you kill everyone? I mean, that'll take a while. All right. You know what? That's we'll fair. cross we'll that bridge. More people. <laughs> so meanwhile, Lou wakes up from his four story fall without as much as a goddamn limp because 1989, right? Damn right. 
the the quick wood lowered him into the next <laughs> oh, story. Oh, okay, no, nice that makes sense. Soft. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the bad guy is like, he's got his knife. He's got his shing knife out. He's slowly moving it towards Tessa's throat, gets it there, looks around once. Brings it back, slowly moves it there again. Has a know. coughing fit. Gets some water. Sorry. Did you put it back in the holster and then pull it back out so I could hear the noise? Is that just, you really like, yeah, I really like the noise. I like I, the noise that it makes. I played this in orchestra. <laughs> and so, but that's when Lou shows up eventually with his rifle. No idea where the fuck he got a rifle. He didn't have it earlier. <laughs> Undead karate. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. We get the backflip disarm. Okay. Now think about this. The bad guy does a backflip and kicks the rifle out of Lou Diamond Phillips' hands. That has got to be the least efficient way to disarm somebody. Think about how loosely you would have to be holding your rifle before that would work. Also, <laughs> definitely also a God power. damn it. Is there a ceiling fan around here? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I, need I just a better did this weapon. big flip, and now you're still holding the gun at me. Okay. I, if he had just moved it slightly out of the way, nice flip, though. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they get into this fight. Lou Diamond Phillips gets his ass handed to him again. So much. And for <laughs> so, the only theory I have is that this stuntman beat up Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> and they were like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, the cameras were on. Do we want to just put that <laughs> in the movie? Right. But before the serial killer can kill him, Tess comes up and she's like, gotcha. And she hits him with a thing and he falls off. But he falls four stories fatally this time. Right. And then turns into one of the Raz doubting cops. Yes, he was doubting cop number two. It took me a while on this one, but yes, it was Grimes. And again, they do the whole thing where it's like, it was Grimes the whole time, but they're like, and we're like, we don't know who the fuck Grimes is, guys. <laughs> and none, <laughs> no idea who any of these characters are. <laughs> so, Yeah, but so doubting cop one still isn't buying the, you know, doubting cop two decided to kill you defense. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Lou Diamond Phillips is just like, look, I need more time. I know that by all accounts, I just murdered a guy, but please let me roam free for a while longer. And cop one is like, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no more murdering other cops from now on. I hadn't said that yet. <laughs> Don't get an established. Don't room. murder any more cops, you little scamp. All right. <laughs> get out of here. Do whatever you want. All right, so yeah, so Lou takes Tess to his place, right? And she just absolutely cannot hide the what a shithole your place is look on her face. <laughs> okay, I I know we're going to go through the beats of this scene, but I have a very important question. Yes? Was Lou Diamond Phillips told that this was a sex scene and the actress not told that this was a sex scene <laughs> or <laughs> vice versa? She because vetoed live without telling anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they had the sax music set up and like they did the sex choreography and she was just like, nah, <laughs> this, this, this scene means nothing. No. At one point he does the lean in thing and tries to like slow everything down. Like what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> and she completely blocks. And he's like, still not making out. Got it. Stupid. Yep, yep, no. Sorry. Eternal demon thing we're dealing with is more yep. important. You're right. You're right. Totally. Okay. What about now? And she's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. So first he's got to present his theory of the case, right? Like she's like, what are we going to do? And he's like, I have an entire room full of bombs and explosives. We will kill the entire human race until he doesn't have anyone left to possess. <laughs> yes. This movie is so bad. It introduces a box of hand grenades <laughs> that it never uses. No, or nope. explains why he would have. Yes, exactly. Nope. Exactly. I, I wanted an after credit scene where it just shows the box of hand grenades and like there's a subtitle that's like, what were these for? <laughs> <laughs> Remember these? They're just wandering off going like, well, I guess we'll go fuck ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go be in a Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> He was a whole barrel of grenades in his movie. <laughs> Monty Python used the grenades. Yeah, but so, yeah, so they're just about to go ahead and make a fuck scene out of it after all when suddenly they hear noises in the other room and I'm like, oh, please tell me he possessed the cat. We know he can possess animals. He got a horse earlier, but no, no. 
the the bad guy had possessed a homeless lady that was outside of his building and can now fly. He's uh, <laughs> popping a wheelie with the homeless lady. <laughs> He's doing flying tricks as homeless lady outside of the window just to like taunt for a minute. Yep. Like she's doing the escalator and the canoe going <laughs> back and forth. But yes. And with it, any chance that this movie would be taken seriously is ruined by him being like, wee, look at me. I'm a homeless lady now. <laughs> <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Look, I'm flying. I'm flying. Yeah, I don't but, have to. But then she crashes her through the window. And then we get to watch Lou Diamond Phillips get his ass kicked by a homeless lady, too. It's so This was oh. so much goddamn fun to watch. This actress does such a phenomenal job. She does. She read the script and got it, and she was like, oh, so I'm just going to fucking beat up Blue Diamond Phillips and say whatever the fuck I want? And they were like, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Got it. She's great. She's so enthusiastic. She's oh. dancing around like Apollo Creed, stepping back, <laughs> doing, stuff, doing the Ali shuffle. Dick punch. <laughs> Parkour. Headbutt. She literally slaps him in the face and kicks him in the balls. Yep. I don't care <laughs> yep. what you say about any movie. Not enough horror action movies involve a demon kicking the protagonist in the ball. <laughs> and Lou Diamond Phillips was not ready for especially the face slap. He got <laughs> visibly angry and it was the best. <laughs> so yeah, so they escape from the homeless lady. They get in this car and it turns out like they're driving away, but it turns out she was in the car the whole time. And they have this bizarre moment where like she's climbing into the front seat and grabbing the steering wheel, but like his feet are still on the pedals, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. We can still see her feet. He could just stop or even just not <laughs> continue to accelerate. But instead, he's going like, oh, my God, all the traffic you're steering us into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this performance is fantastic. Is there a drive through dumpster around here? <laughs> this would be fun. This would be a fun time for a drive through dumpster. I one of those in a hurry. But I will say, though, like we get a superb fucking car wreck at the end of this, uh, right? Yeah. To flip the car nine times. Great. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Whichever stuntman did that now thinks Hollywood is a pedophile satanic cult and made a documentary <laughs> about it. And you know what was helpful is all the cars in the 80s were ramp shaped. Yeah. Yep, so they were it. able to just like realistically, almost any car you drive into it, you're flipping over nine. Right, they were miles. either they were either ramps or boxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, so it, so Lou Diamond Phillips, he's in the wreck. He, he wakes up from his car accident, and the psychic lady is nowhere to be seen, and neither is the homeless lady. They're gone. <sighs> so, okay, now he, he goes back to see the nun, right? He's like, I know we introduced you for a fucking reason. This It doesn't make any goddamn sense if you're not in the third act. She's like, okay, all right, I'll help you, but you have to click yes on all the terms and conditions first. Let me. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, great. Clicking it. Um, any chance you have a magic box of demon killing stuff? I yeah. Do. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you do? Because because we were here earlier. Feels like you could have said something about that. We, you knew we were going to go fight a demon, right? So like you, okay. Yeah. So she, for, first, she has to explain the three powers, right? Mm -hmm. She has to explain the title, and then she says, and he's like, "But what can we do?" And she's like, "Well, there's only one way to stop him," and and he's like, "What is it?" And 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 she's like, "It's Noah's best worst." And it's the greatest thing of all goddamn time. <laughs> so, she, so she pulls out this crucifix and we're like, oh, it's just a crucifix. But then, ching! <laughs> it's a knife! It's a knife crucifix! <laughs> and she very clearly surprises him with it. Because she says, she goes, the only soul in history who had all three powers. And he's like, oh, Jesus. And she's like, no, Jesus, knife. <laughs> Sharp Jesus. <laughs> Don't talk during my thing. I was doing a bit. I was doing a title drop and then. <laughs> okay, now. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> so, yes. And that's why this movie counts absolutely for God awful movies. The main, mo the whole fucking movie is written around that amazing moment when she opens the crucifix. <laughs> you know what? Go back out. I'm going to explain it to you again. I don't <laughs> like what happened there. I would be happy if this movie just replayed that scene over and over again until the credits. Okay. <sighs> so now, so the nun and Lou Diamond Phillips, they have to go after the psychic lady. So they go into LA's endless labyrinth of underground tunnels and catacombs <laughs> and mazes and shit. Right? Yeah. And the nun's like, hey, you know what? I'm out past curfew anyway. You want to 
You know, fuck while we're out. No, you, okay, we got <laughs> yeah, it. No, it's my bad. Okay. Sorry. I'm just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Saw this. All right. So, but Lou eventually pops out and he sees Tess all like Satan ritualed up, but homeless lady is waiting to pounce on him like a goddamn ninja. She was hanging above the door. Like doing like so a fan good. damn split or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she must have been there for a while, right? right like, yeah. how would you know that? So she was just like, okay, poised on the ceiling like a spider, ready to go. <laughs> All right, I really didn't think this through. Words with friends. This is taking well, a while. Trying to make conversation with Tess. I'm thinking of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no? Is it Jesus knife? <laughs> nah, it's Jesus knife. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so they get into a fight, right? The old lady starts beating up Lou Diamond Phillips again, which is great, but he has a gun, so he shoots her, but she's bulletproof, but not but not in the forehead. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> this is so... He shoots her, and she's like, oh, 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 and then he shoots her in the head, and she's like, nah, that one will do it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this is why you always bring a ceiling fan. <laughs> Note to self, ceiling fan for next time. <laughs> So, yeah, but but now that's not enough, right? They have to set the old lady's corpse on fire. They have the Jesus knife at this moment, right? Yep. They could just stab her with the Jesus, but they don't. They set her on fire. And then they stand there and watch it for a bit. Like, we watch them go like, quick, we've got to get out of here. But, okay, let's watch the, yeah, so, the yeah, fire for a Yeah, like, no, oh, I want to watch the fire a little bit. Yeah. It'll start stinking in a minute, but not right away. Sure. Yeah. So afterwards, they hustle cool. out of the sewers. Fire. <laughs> but damn it, if Sister Marguerite the Nun isn't fucking around in the tunnel because she's demon possessed now. Ah, I forgot the nun. I got to okay. go back and get the nun. <laughs> so this is a nun who drinks and uses heroin? That's what believe? we must assume. Well, because that, that's what they established earlier, right? That he could only possess people who are weak of mind and who are alcoholics. and Yeah, but no, but now also the nun. Interesting. Yeah. So, but now Lou has to fight the nun, which again, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> again, and we should be clear, get the shit kicked out of him by a nun. Yeah. Oh, yes, exactly. exactly. There will never be a fight scene in this movie where <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips isn't just getting trashed by whatever the other person is. <laughs> so. Yeah. So they have a fight. He loses, obviously, and gets disarmed. And now nun possessed by demon has the gun. And Lou Diamond Phillips, the only thing he can do is like taunt her, him, taunt the demon inside the nun. So he's like, oh, man. So uh, I heard your grandpa's your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and the demon's yeah. like, shut up. <laughs> okay. So up until this point, there's been no indication that the people bad guy possesses can fight him with or without Jesus powers, right? There's never been an indication that he has anything but complete control over these people. But Lou Diamond Phillips declares it like the floor is lava. He's like, Marguerite, you can fight him. Fight him with your powers. Also, your grandpa was your dad. And he's like, okay, that's not cool. Come on. There's <laughs> no, no need for that. Yeah, right. So, so the nun fights her way through and she pulls out the Jesus knife and she goes to just stab herself, right? Because she's like, oh, this will end the movie right away. But he fights through, I guess, and takes control of her. And this is when the nun like physically transforms into him. Or else, yeah, that's what just what Lou Diamond Phillips is seeing. I don't know, like, because because he's at this point, Lou Diamond Phillips has to punch the guy in the head a bunch of times, and I think he was just like, <laughs> "I'm not punching the nun." So <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and meanwhile, Tess is off to the side, and she's playing with the giant water wheel thing again. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, she's kind of obsessed with that fucking thing. Yeah, Lou Diamond Phillips looks over. He's like, Tess. Are you going to flood the room with water? Don't do that. Definitely don't do that. That no. would not help us. Everyone don't knows do that. Everyone knows demons hate getting wet because <laughs> they're what? Cats. <laughs> Trust me. This is great. We have not set up that this will help either of you at all. Remember the guy told you definitely. Oh, my God. You did it. Okay. I'm dying. I already did it. <laughs> there better not be an acid bath somewhere in this public water system or else. We're gonna be in this trouble. Could be dangerous. Yeah, right. So she opens the sewage pipe, but she runs down to where it's gonna get her, right? Like, cause she's above it. At first, she she opens the thing and then she runs down before the sewage can start flooding in, so that she can get in on the fun. Now, luckily, they fell into one of the sewers' many fine water slides. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is so fucking stupid. We spend like three minutes watching her and the bad guy just wee their way down water slides. You remember in the Goonies? You remember? Yeah, <laughs> right, like, yeah. <laughs> so cool. So, all right, so they get out of the water slide and now it's just psychic girl and demon bad guy who looks like the serial killer now for whatever reason. And the crucifix knife falls onto the platform that they're on. And she's like, aha, your one weakness that I, as a character, don't know about yet. <laughs> <laughs> but then it falls through a gap. Yep. Oh, never mind. Is that a sharp crucifix? No, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it's not. Never mind. <laughs> and below them, as Heath has already hinted at, <laughs> is an open vat of bubbling acid. <laughs> yes, just bubbling, broiling, explosively flammable acid. <laughs> Why would you have that in your public water system? <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Heath, this movie is set in LA. So <laughs> I have so many questions about the municipal water system of Los Angeles. Pretty sure that's just what the rain's like there. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's about to kill Tess again. You know, he's doing his you know, whatever his countdown, he's like, I'm going to kill you in five, four. And then Lou Diamond Phillips comes down the water slide and grabs him, you know, attacks him. <laughs> so they wrestle around a little bit and he's like, nope, this is the one time I am not going to get my ass kicked. So he pulls out the goddamn Zippo. Now, this fucking movie didn't have the sense to ever do anything with the rifle that he had or the big box of fucking handguns. But Chekhov's Zippo comes in handy right here. <laughs> he like lights the Zippo and just like, holds it to the bad guy's face and he's like, oh, my eyebrows, you fuck. Ow. <laughs> That'll take forever to grow back. And then he throws him into the vat of acid. Right where you right. bruised me by throwing a gun earlier. Same spot. <laughs> Same spot. <laughs> a lot of really minor damage to me. This is so, obnoxious. But yeah, so he throws the bad guy into the acid and the, the bad guy's like thrashing around in the acid. He's like, you know, that's not probably going to do the trick. Just the acid. <laughs> so he throws his, his Zippo in there. And it turns out, of course, it's explodey, flamey acid as well. Right? Yep. When like, would that be useful to the water system? <laughs> 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 they had a thing of acid and somebody was like, well, does it blow up, though? <laughs> Again, Heath, L.A., Los Angeles. <laughs> this movie is set in Los Angeles. <laughs> So he, he goes, they go downstairs, they go to the bottom where the acid bath is, and wouldn't you know it, damn it if the bad guy doesn't leap out of the acid bath on fire and continue to fight them. And explain to them the premise again. Being oh, yeah. Like, no, I'm, do you guys not get, I'm immortal and I teleport. What made you think any of that would work or anything ever? Yeah, so Lou fights with him a little bit. He gets the crucifix knife this time, right? So he's about to stab the bad guy, and the bad guy turns back into a nun. And at just that moment, a couple of beat cops come in, and they're like, dude, are you about to stab that nun with that crucifix? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, listen, guys, I need you to trust me on this. It definitely makes sense for me to stab this nun right now, so I'm going to do it. Be cool. And they're like... No. No. <laughs> going to shoot you. You're stabbing a lady. She's a nun. So, yeah. So they, yeah, right. No, fucking Lou Diamond Phillips is like heroically stabs a nun at the end of this movie, right? Because he, he turns <laughs> back <laughs> into <laughs> a nun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and the nun's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's okay. I'm a nun. I mean, it's what, what <laughs> being a nun is better than being dead. Come on, give me a break. So he stabs her to death. The cops shoot him, right? But the bad guy is gone. So final scene, we get Tess. She's standing over Lou's unconscious body in the hospital when suddenly he attacks her. It was all a dream. But, uh, did, but it was so, a dream. Or was, was it? it? Or is he? <laughs> the end. The end? <laughs> or was I expected it? the film yes. to like fritter away and for the director just to be sitting there. Oh, shit. Sorry. I was reading this the first time. <laughs> is, is it? <laughs> All right. So the obvious question to close, where does this one rank in Lou Diamond Phillips filmography for you guys? Mm. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to go below La Bamba, but above his bit part on the George Lopez show. Okay. So, so yeah. in his filmography is which <laughs> was where Eli put it. Yeah. Uh, Heath, can you be any more specific? I say it beats everything except for Stand and Deliver. 
Ooh. Oh, all right, all right. I so, mean, Jaime Escalante, but it, it's it got... Jesus Knife beats all the other ones. Well, Jesus Knife. Okay, so I was going to put it right between Bats and The Big Hit, and anyone who's familiar with his fucking filmography knows which of is that those it's above and which is below. So <laughs> we're not going to... I can get into any details. All right. So while that does it for our review of the first power, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to keep Eli's October scaramony or whatever going. So Eli, Book tell Taylor. us what's on deck. <laughs> Hilary Swank is a former Christian missionary who specializes in debunking religious phenomena. Oh, no. That is until she investigates a small town which seems to be suffering from 10 <laughs> yes! biblical plagues. Yes. Huh. We're watching The Reaping, the oh, unfortunately named us. The Reaping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with a little reaping to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 268 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. So if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out the sibling shows, The Skating Idiot, Citation Data, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and people on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Lou Diamond Phillips went on to go to jail for murdering a cop because <laughs> he was a demon who attacked me is not a real defense of a right. murder. <laughs> It took weeks for L.A. to get all of that nun out of its acid supply. <laughs> or was it? You you have oh. to stop that. Or do. Yes. <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh's a rapist. <laughs> Richie Valens did better fighting that airplane than Lou Diamond oh, God. fighting demons in this movie. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.